Good morning, everyone. I'm Emily Young with NC Tech. We'll go ahead and get today's session, our talent network discussion session started on unique ways to fill your talent pipeline. Um, we are going to have an amazing discussion today. I just want to go over a couple housekeeping items quickly here. If you have any issues, please go ahead and send those over to me uh, in the chat. And uh, if you have any questions, our moderator this morning, uh, we'll let you know how to submit those for our panel. This is one of our virtual programs um, discussing all kinds of great things with our talent network. We'll be recording today's session, so we'll send that to everyone afterward as well. I've got a few announcements for you at the end of today's panel. Um, but we'll go ahead and get things started. I'm excited to introduce to y'all our Director of Programs and Sponsorships, Tracy Sternberg. And I will kick it over to her to share a few things with you. Good morning, everybody. Um, as Emily said, I'm Tracy Sternberg, and I am the Director of Programs and Sponsorship with NC Tech. And we are excited to be hosting our second annual Diversity and Inclusion in Tech Summit in a couple of weeks. And I will hope that you will take the opportunity to join us. We're going to be hosting this on the mornings of uh, March 24th and 25th. So that's Wednesday and Thursday. Um, and we'll be... Um, We've got some amazing speakers uh, uh, on tap for you. First, we'll kick off with uh, the U U.S. Uh, CTO for Microsoft, Gina Lofton. And then um, we'll have three amazing uh, uh, breakout sessions that will discuss uh, how tech is doing in terms of measuring the success of DNI, removing bias in data analytics, and then finding diverse tech talent, both for today and tomorrow. Uh, we'll also interject a few motivational moments. And then day two, we'll kick off with a keynote from Farrah Palumbo, who's the Chief per People Officer with Blue Cross and Blue Shield. And we'll finish with a, a panel discussion uh, that will feature several CXOs from around the state uh, that will talk about building comfort around uh, difficult conversations. So we've got some really great topics on tap and a really great speaker lineup. And I hope that you will take some time and join us on those days. So uh, check out our website, it's under our events um, and, and you, there's a full lineup and all the speakers and the a full agenda is available for you to see. So check it out and, uh, and register. We'll look forward to seeing you there. Thanks. Harold, I'm gonna toss it over to you. All right, Tracy. Well, thank you, Tracy. And before we start, um, if I could, uh, echo even what Tracy said, and, and I would definitely spread the word on the DNI Summit. I had the fortune, uh, I was fortunate last year to attend uh, the two-day affair, and it was just wonderful. Um, there's so much amazing content, there's so many great stories, so many things that are uh, practical and applicable that we can all bring back into our workplace. So uh, I'd ask everyone attending today, spread the word. I think there's even some good promotional deals out there as far as uh, this event. So uh, this type of content is wonderful. And really, for those of us uh, invested in technology, it, it's the only conference of its kind, you know, certainly in North Carolina. So uh, we'll start there, but uh, we'll kick off our discussion this morning. And I, I would like to welcome everyone and say good morning. And for everyone attending this webinar today, whether you're part of the audience, serving on this panel, and uh, heck, even, even myself, we all have skills and characteristics that are unique to each of us. Additionally, we have a set of skills that may be similar to those we work with or those we compete for our dream job with. For those of you that are in a hiring capacity, the, the demand for talent, especially in technical roles, far outweighs the supply. I don't think I'm breaking any uh, news by saying that, but the technology sector has been red hot for the past few quarters. And that, there's an outlook our outlook is that's gonna remain bullish for all of 2021. With that said, what can we do differently? If you're considering a new role, are you highlighting the traits and skills you have to differentiate yourself from others? If you're an employer, have you created an environment that candidates will desire? And if so, how are you marketing that? If you are a hiring manager, are you looking at the same old places for talent or are you truly being creative in finding wonderful candidates for your positions? Well, for those of you in our audience this morning, you're in for a treat. Our expert panel will answer those questions. And as a bonus, many more. Even better, the cost for this information is incredibly affordable. Actually, I take that back. It is better than affordable. It is free. What a, what a wonderful way to start a Tuesday morning. 
My name is Harold Zeichner, and I'm Director of Customer Experience with APC, which stands for Alliance of Professionals and Consultants. There are two main things I do in my role. I work with APC's clients to define their hiring needs, whether on a project basis or finding talented individuals to work with their companies directly. The other main aspect of my role is in working with my team of recruiters to identify the most talented individuals for our clients. We do that in many ways, some of which I'll share during this discussion. Speaking of our recruiters at APC, they are a main reason companies come to us. Our team of recruiters have been in the industry an average of almost 20 years and with APC an average of almost eight years. It is that experience and expertise that separates us. With over 25 years of providing talented candidates to our clients and our status as one of the most highly rated diversity suppliers, I hope you will consider partnering with APC as well if you are not doing so already. We're about to begin our program this morning. As I mentioned earlier, we have a tremendous panel of experts as it relates to unique ways to fill your talent pipeline. Our experts represent technology, manufacturing with a focus on technology, higher education, as well as continuing education and continued learning. Before we start, one thing I would like to encourage is to make this discussion as interactive as possible. Emily had mentioned at the beginning of this, uh, the Q&A function, which you'll see at the bottom of your uh, screen. And I would go ahead and really suggest submit questions. Uh, we'll try to get our panelists, I'll try to get to as many of those as possible. So with that being said, we're gonna uh, go ahead and, and start off right now and with our panel. And I'm gonna ask each of our panelists to take a moment to introduce yourself, the organization you're with, a little bit about your role, and uh, maybe a few seconds about uh, your role, specifically bringing talent into your company. And we'll go ahead and start with Lindsay. Good morning. Good morning, hey y'all. My name is Lindsay Scott and I serve as the Talent Development Manager for Coca-Cola Consolidated. Coca-Cola Consolidated is the nation's largest independent bottler of Coca-Cola products. Um, as a Talent Development Manager, I am responsible for our early talent pipeline. So I specifically manage our internship program as well as our management trainee program, which is our uh, entry-level rotational leadership development program. My mute button was sticking. I've had this issue before. Sorry about the awkward delay, but if there's no way to start a panel discussion without a little awkward delay by the moderator. So uh, we'll uh, seamlessly throw it over to you, Zach. Hey, thank you, Harold. I want to thank Emily and NC Tech as well for putting this on. My name is Zach Wajenski. I lead operations and delivery for Rapid Scale. We're a cloud-based uh, managed services company, part of the Cox Communication uh, family of, uh, of organizations. And we support companies' uh, cloud needs, everything from desktop as a service, security, backups, um, audit compliance, things of that nature across our network of data centers globally. My specific role, I lead everything from architecture down to uh, customer success, including operations, compliance, um, project management organization. So it's a pretty diverse uh, set of skills that we look for. Um, starting from, you know, people straight out of school with a good foundational skill set, all the way up to, you know, people that are uh, subject matter experts in any given uh, area across those uh, different lines of products and um, services that we deliver to our customers. Zach, thank you. And then uh, in my, my haste to get my mute button off, I need, uh, thank you, Lindsay. I really appreciate both of you uh, sharing a little bit about uh, your roles and your background. And uh, we're going to turn it over to Sue Wallace right now. Good morning, Sue. Good morning. I'm Sue Wallace. I'm the Vice President of Alumni Service, Services and Community Engagement for CompTIA Tech Career Academy. Uh, we're, we sit underneath the CompTIA umbrella, uh, Trade Association. Um, and one of the things that, that we're focused on with CompTIA Tech is helping individuals who are looking for um, a start in the tech industry, helping them gain the skills, the certifications, and the job placement assistance they need to get connected to employers who are looking for that talent. Perfect, Sue, thank you very much. And uh, as it relates to CompTIA, I think uh, some of us saw the news yesterday that came out with a, 
a release that I think uh, North Carolina is rated the fourth hottest state as far as technology rolls right now. So very timely that we're having this discussion and we're very <laughs> fortunate to have you on the panel, Sue. Thank you. Good to be here. Great. Last but certainly not least, my uh, good friend, Dr. Keith Babushik. Thanks, Will. Hi, everybody. Thanks, NC Tech, for hosting this webinar, too. Um, I'm Keith Babushchek. I am the Provost of IT Programs at Wake Tech, the Wake Technical Community College. I'm also the Chief Campus Officer of the RTP Campus. Um, a little bit about Wake Tech's programs. Our IT degrees, we have about 5,300 students in a variety of IT degree programs and certificates. Um, we also have over 800 students in our non-credit IT courses. Our offerings range the gamut from um, digital literacy and introductory um, IT courses, certification courses, degree courses, and even corporate training. So we have kind of everything in between. We connect uh, to programs at the high school and our students have opportunities to continue on to um, the four-year schools to continue their education. So we're definitely building a, a training ladder and a, a pipeline development ladder um, for IT, um, IT programs throughout the triangle. Great, Keith, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I'd mentioned in, in the beginning how excited I am for this morning. And I think each of you in the audience got a glimpse of why we've got a, a, a panel that is gonna be able to bring expertise in a variety of ways from uh, the, the software uh, cloud company that Zach is part of at rapid scale to uh, the manufacturing and distribution organization that Lindsay is part with, uh, with Coca-Cola. And then I really excited about just hearing how, what type of opportunities are available to advance your career, either through certifications that CompTIA may offer, or certainly through uh, the classes and curriculum that Wake Tech has. So uh, we'll dive into a little bit of all of that in, in a minute. But as we start, um, you know, one of the uh, you know, questions we, we were talking about is all companies have had to shift how they hire through the through the events of the last 12 months. And uh, I'm going to start with Lindsay and, and then ask Zach, if you can share a few things that you do differently today as compared to one year ago with respect to the hiring process. Yeah, so uh, the hiring process in terms of um, university relations and kind of early talent pipelines has drastically shifted. Um, my world was pretty much an in-person recruiting world um, prior to all things 2020. Um, it was boots on the ground recruitment, going to universities, going to community colleges, um, speaking at different events, even such as this in person and really getting to know people in person and building those relationships. And that has all completely gone away. Um, everything has turned um, to remote recruiting, which has been definitely an adjustment in the world of university kind of university relations and that early talent, because um, so much of that is in person. Um, for us, thankfully, actually prior to COVID, just a couple months prior, so not um, not a ton before, but our, our entire organization actually um, got on board with Microsoft Teams. And so that was something we implemented as a company. Thankfully that um, we kind of had gotten that comfort level just about the time that um, COVID really took full effect and we were forced to have a lot of our workforce working um, remotely. In terms of actual recruitment, everything I'm doing now is through Microsoft Teams. And so we attend virtual career expos. We're hosting different um, really virtual recruitment sessions when it's kind of peak recruiting season. And a lot of what we're doing is connecting with candidates through things like LinkedIn, emails, a lot of phone calls. Um, so it's definitely, from, from my perspective, it's challenging a different skill set in terms of how do you make the most of getting to meet with a candidate for maybe two minutes on, on a Zoom call or a virtual career fair. And it's also on the opposite end of the spectrum for candidates. It's been really interesting to see how um, they've been forced to adapt to something that a lot of people aren't comfortable with and to share their skill set. Um, how do we make someone feel comfortable and excited about our organization in a virtual capacity? Um, I would say that is definitely the biggest way it's really impacted us. Thankfully, we're still doing really well, but it's definitely called upon our entire recruitment team, really our entire organization to get comfortable with how do we brand ourselves 
ourselves virtually and how do we communicate that message when you can't really get that full experience in person of having, you know, a whole, whole Coca-Cola stand around you, having those kind of beverages surrounding you. So really relying on a different skill set um, and trying to make sure we maximize our conversations with people to get to the root of what are they looking for? What's their, what are kind of their hopes and dreams and condensing that into really short um, time periods. So it's been a very exciting change. And I actually am very much looking forward to the time when we can blend a hybrid really of having those in-person events, because I think there's nothing that can take um, take away from that. However, I really love getting having some of these virtual opportunities. They have really helped us to increase um, our candidate pool and reach students that we may never have seen before. So that part has been very cool and very positive. Great. Lindsay, thank you. And uh, as I was taking some notes, uh, you, you already stole my follow-up question about uh, what, what you see in the future. Is it this hybrid approach that I think a lot of us are, are, are seeing? And we'll dive in a little yeah. more to that in a bit, because I think, as you said, it, it, that's the best of both worlds. We want to get back to uh, the ability to meet in person at some point. And, and uh, it is hard to take away from that. But with technology, there are so many more people we can reach and often in a quicker fashion as well. Um, yeah. so we'll, we'll dive back into that in a moment, but uh, Zach, same, same question as far as the last 12 months, what are uh, some things that you or, or rapid scale in general is doing differently today as compared to uh, one year ago? Sure. Well, I, I've got to echo Lindsay as well. You know, we implemented Microsoft teams and we use that um, every day. It's a, uh, it's a key to uh, uh, you know, kind of our day-to-day -day business, as well as our recruiting and our interviewing process, where historically you do a, you know, a screening call, then it's a, you know, a set of panel interviews on premise with the candidates, you know, getting an idea of what their uh, skill sets were, um, you know, what those soft skills were, such as their communication style, right? their attitude, you know, those, those true interpersonal skills that um, matter so much, especially you know, when you're looking at that, that younger population, you know, that's just reskilled or is upskilling straight out of school, um, where we're less worried about subject matter expertise, like we would be in some of those senior roles, but much more focus on people being able to come in with those foundational skills, where we know that we can give them the training they need, and they can hit the ground running. Um, so not just the candidates, but I believe also the, uh, the people, you know, inside of rapid scale that are doing the interview, have come a lot more, um, a lot more familiar, you know, with be doing things over, you know, whether it be Zoom or whether it be over Teams, but doing those video conferences, learning how to communicate over those um, has, you know, really come a long way. And that's also give us the comfort level that we don't necessarily need talent in market where once everything opens back up, they can come into the office. If we find a great candidate um, that's not within one of our markets where we have a, uh, where we have an office, you know, given the experience we've had over the past year, I think a lot of our managers have a lot more of a comfort level that, hey, we can still get what we need. We can still communicate. Um, we still have that, uh, you know, that, that core workflow that isn't going to be impacted because of the growth everybody's come with um, over the past year and being able to uh, work remotely. You know, in some cases, even if they, you know, they, people only live a mile down the road from each other. So. I think that's one of the ways we've uh, we've really come a long way, as well as some of the partnerships um, with folks like Keith and Wake Tech. You know, making sure that the kids that we're bringing on or we're interviewing these younger folks, um, we're able to ensure that we're looking at some of those underrepresented populations, making sure that we're getting that diversity in our uh, in the hiring channel, um, and making sure that you know they do have some of those core um, you know technology skills that allow them to you know really soak up the information and the, uh, you know, the training that we give them when we first bring them on board. Great, Zach. And uh, both you and Lindsay uh, shared so many things that I think we should even just dive in and, and unpack a, a little bit, because I think our audience and those that may view this later will, will really uh, appreciate that. Um, we think back one year ago today when we first started doing Teams or Zoom or how uh, uncomfortable it was. I remember actually doing a session like this, uh, I think towards the end of, of March, and I was terrified. And uh, it still is a little terrifying being on video and on camera. Uh, everyone's approach is a little bit different depending on how much you've used it and, and your personality. So it, it, I think one thing though is in general, 
the majority of us have gotten comfortable with these tools and how to use them and have figured out a little of the glitches here and there. Uh, I would encourage those that are interviewing for roles via uh, you know, one of these collaborative tools. It's just, these are the little things that are important, right? Of making sure that you've got the right setting. And I, I've seen it all at this point. I've seen laundry in the background and a messy room. And, and th those things, they seem small, but they certainly matter as you're trying to make that first impression over video, which is, is not, not the norm. Um, you know, one of the things you, you mentioned, Zach, was rapid scale. And, and I think a lot of the, the, the clients, you know, we work with are starting to really take the approach of let's find the best talent where they sit. And unless it's a critical role or, or a specific job that needs to be done in the office, offer this flexibility, not just for now, but but moving forward. So I think that's one of the, the ways that the world has certainly changed over the last the last 12 months. Um, it, you know, Lindsay, uh, I'll go back to you and and just get your thoughts again. You know, you touched on it towards the end of your talk about the hybrid approach and um, getting back to a place that we're meeting in person, but we're also doing a, a lot of this. Are these discussions that you've had with your organization on what things will look like in three months and six months and towards the end of the year? Yeah, that's a great question. So a lot of it is, to be perfectly honest, it's it's not as much in our hands because we are relying on universities to open back up. And it really, it's so unique to, I do have some universities I work with that I have been able to go on campus for certain um, socially distant events, but then you have really large scale organizations and universities that that's just not possible. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. I'm, I'm hopeful that I'll be able to be back on campuses in the fall, but it's, it's a very much a day by day kind of um, thought process working with those universities. But I will say probably the coolest thing about that hybrid approach. So if there's anyone here listening, take note that um, organizations can actually attend more events when we have some virtual events sprinkled in because, um, you know, we have X number of dollars that we can spend on recruitment. Some organizations can spend more, some can spend less, and that's um, varying, but it's been such a privilege and such a cool opportunity to be able to actually say yes to so many more events, um, really, especially like over the past six months, because something that I, I was attending an event with a university right down the road from us that um, normally I probably would not have even been able to attend, but because um, normally it would be, you know, you have to get there 45 minutes early and then you're there afterwards. So you're spending probably five to six hours for like a two hour event. And um, then there's a cost associated with it and, and the organization's paying for all those costs. Well, this turned into from a two hour event to really a one hour um, virtual event. It was free to our organization to attend. And so all of a sudden I'm saying yes to things because an hour of my time, I'm happy to give. I love connecting with students. And if I'm not having to incur travel and expenses to get there and, and just, um, expenses to participate, let alone. And uh, so actually being able to say yes to the, all of those events, I've been able to meet so many students that I don't think I would have ever met before. So that's not probably been the thing, my favorite thing about the hybrid approach that I'm hoping we get to keep because I love being able to say yes to more events that I can't always say yes to when you have, you know, X number of dollars and you have to figure out every university event that you're going to go to and every recruitment event. So that's been um, the best part about that hybrid approach for sure. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Lindsay. And I think, you know, I would encourage those that are listening today to take the same approach for the events that you'll be attending as well. Um, uh, there, there's just so much wonderful content out there. And, and the beauty of this, if you go to an event and maybe it's just not what you thought it was. I hope you guys don't feel about that way about this morning's event, but your time commitment as well is not locked in as long. Um, uh, you guys can still hear me. I had the little weird circle going on my, uh, my bandwidth. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so I think you can just get out to more things and you never know when one of those connections is going to be the one that uh, provides information that you're looking for, or makes an introduction to someone that you've wanted to meet. So I would encourage everyone to attend those things. Lindsay, you were talking a little, you know, about your role in, in working with universities and colleges and institutes of higher education. So a perfect segue to uh, Keith. Keith, we're gonna uh, get you on the board here and then we'll, we'll go to Sue in a moment. But as far as Wake Tech, uh, in your opening, you talked a little bit about the different degreed and non-degreed 
programs you offer. And I would venture that a lot of our audience isn't aware of the breadth of offerings, uh, the cost uh, effective offerings that are there. And would love you to just share a little bit about those technical areas and maybe you can share a few of the different courses and certifications that Wake Tech offers. Sure, absolutely, thanks. And you know, it, it's hard for me to keep up with everything that we offer. So I definitely know that uh, the community and the public um, learning what we're doing is a, a responsive and agile organization. Um, you know, we have two strategies with our IT programs at Wake Tech. Um, the first one makes sense to everybody, it's skill development. Um, we take a look at the jobs that are posted. We take a look at the labor market data and we take a look at certifications that matter for hiring and promotion decisions. And we align programs to that. And that's why, you know, um, we have the programs we have and we have the growth that we've had. We, we did a little dive into the research and this spring compared to last spring, our seats filled has grown by 11%. And that's even through the pandemic and through, um, through everything people have been struggling with and working it through, we've been able to reach out and provide support. And I think that that's a testament to what we do at Wake Tech and what we provide but it also shows the, the need for filling the IT pipeline and, and the, the jobs are out there. And we have a lot of people that are career changers looking to, to upscale and to move into different, different jobs. So, so that's the, the first part that we have at Wake Tech is we align to skills that are important, certifications that are important. The second one is opportunity. You know, we really take students, as we say in community colleges in North Carolina, um, where they are as far as where they want to go. And that includes our relationship with high school programs. It includes a program we ran last spring right after uh, COVID-19, kind of we all started responding. We had opportunities for tuition-free um, IT training and we continue that through funding through from the federal government through the governor's office for COVID relief. Um, so we have people that are coming in that are in various careers that want to switch. We have people that are just starting out um, we also have people with bachelor's degrees and master's degrees and above who are, who are upskilling. Um, we have a business analytics uh, certificate program um, and, and a degree as well. But in our intro certificate, over half of the students in that program already have a bachelor's degree or higher. And they're really taking that in and looking to make the pivot. So um, a few things I'll highlight. We just developed in our non-credit programs what we're calling power packs. And that's bundling together certifications and trainings that link directly to job outcomes. Um, IT support technician is one. And um, this is where I'm really happy to have Sue in on the conversation because we align directly to CompTIA certifications. And in that course, it's a um, four to six month course, part-time study that aligns to IT fundamentals plus and A plus certification. Um, the cost is included, the cost of the certifications are included in the tuition. And we're also working with CompTIA on an employability skills curriculum. Um, and that's really vital. It goes to what Zach and Lindsay have also said. It's not just about technical skills. It's about employability and soft skills as well. So, so we have a combination of things, training, degrees. Um, I say where everyone, you know, needs some, needs a little bit of upskilling or looking to what they want to do next. Um, Keith, thank you. And, um, you know, I, I would just encourage everyone to take a look at Wake Tech's uh, website and uh, I'm sure some information we can even share uh, during and after this call. The power packs that Keith uh, mentioned um, are just wonderful opportunities if you're in an organization and looking to increase your skill set. It, it's um, I don't think there's anything like like that. So uh, pretty innovative. And there's just, uh, you know, as Keith mentioned, analytics and networking and Python programming. And I think there's just a vast array of wonderful uh, offerings through Wake Tech. So we'll dive into that a little bit more, but I uh, wanted to get that on, on everyone's radar. And, and Keith, as you mentioned, this, uh, what's wonderful is this partnership that you have with CompTIA. And we'll, uh, we'll you know, certainly want you and Sue to, to chat about that. But before we even get there, Sue, uh, you know, as far as the certifications in the technical areas that CompTIA offers. Is that something you can talk about a bit and uh, uh, also other ways that CompTIA helps individuals obtain new skills? Sure, um, CompTIA um, has about 13 different certifications um, that are offered. 
And one of the things that, that we highlight most about um, the CompTIA certifications is that they're vendor neutral. So there's some great certifications out there that are tied directly to um, different vendors, um, which is excellent if you're focused on that particular specialized area. Um, but CompTIA certifications come in with that vendor neutral. What you know, what's common amongst the different vendors? And um, we we start off with, um, as Keith mentioned, the, the IT fundamentals, it's very foundational. Um, and gives what I call the, you know, the inch deep mile wide um, to give people a good um, intro to foundation, foundational skills within tech. Um, it's great as a supplement. It's, it's a great to, place to get started um, if you're starting off your tech career, um, but it's also a good time to, um, a good certification to add to other skills, like maybe, maybe you're in tech sales um, and you are looking to um, expand your knowledge in different areas uh, in technology, you can add on something like an IT fundamentals to help expand uh, your knowledge base um, and, and understand those, those different concepts and terminologies. Um, and then there's the CompTIA A plus certification, which is one of our uh, core stack that we call it the network, the A plus, the network plus security plus, um, that gives a really good foundation to go into a variety of different areas within tech. But that A plus um, really maps directly to um, job core jobs like um, Keith mentioned with um, the um, tech support, entry level tech support, um, help desk types of roles. Um, we, if you go out to the CompTIA certification website, you can see where we have it mapped out for you. If you're looking to get in a certain area in tech, you can see how different, um, different certifications can be stacked one on top of the other in order to get you in the direction you wanna go. Um, and uh, along with that roadmap that we, that we offer, um, we also have a variety of different ways that, that, to help people get there. So some people, you know, maybe maybe they've been tinkering around at home and, and they just want to get a certification. They have a good foundation of the knowledge. They just want to get that cert certification to validate they have those skills. There are self-study um, tools out there that we have. Um, there are books. Um, there are eBooks. There are um, tools like CertMaster Learn that has some some learning components, self-paced learning components in there, or a certain master practice where you're just doing test prep. Um, and then CompTIA has also um, been doing some, some training um, where we've got anything from a, a boot camp style training all the way up to um, something that's more of a live instructor led, um, whether that's face to face when we have the ability to do the face to face um, or, or just that pure online. Um, and uh, you know, I, I like I like when Lindsay was talking about the hybrid, getting the best of both worlds. Um, when we can get back to some face to face, um, I think we'll see more hybrid types of opportunities there as well. Um, but we partner with uh, organizations like um, like the community colleges, like Keith and the community colleges. We partner with other training organizations, and we provide some of our own training. Um, as you said at the beginning, there is just such a huge demand for uh, talent in the tech industry um, that there are a variety of different ways that we can all work together to, to get more people into the pipeline, get people that have that right aptitude, that right attitude, give them that the employability skills, the soft skills, along with the tech skills that they need to be successful in the industry. Great. Thank you, Sue. And, um, you know, Keith, I didn't know if you wanted to add on to that a little bit about the, that partnership with Wake Tech and, and CompTIA and how you guys uh, support each other and augment each other and anything you could add. Sure. Uh, thanks. Um, I, right now, it's a, it's a brand new relationship and we're exploring how we can go even further. But, um, you know, this, this employability skills piece um, and soft skills piece, I think is really important because it's what many employers say is, is the key. Um, you have to, you know, we teach the skills to get the job and to keep the job. 
and um, that's where these employability skills come in. And we, the, the approach we're taking with CompTIA is also involving our partners. So students would go through some lessons about building a brand and working on a resume and a cover letter. Um, but then they would also have a mock interview with a partner and really get that practical experience and feedback. Um, and I, that's really important. But the one thing to think about is that people are changing careers, people are doing a lot of different things. The, the median age of our IT programs is um, in their late 20s. So, you know, our, our programs and courses aren't student, necessarily students that are coming directly from high school into our programs. Um, they're career changers. They're people who have done one thing and are kind of looking to do something else. And so they need to learn that culture of what it means to work in IT and the employability skills, as well as the tech skills. And, and we provide that as a vital part of the curriculum as well as support to, to get a job afterward. Um, companies and, and um, have told me a lot that they really value career changers because they bring that experience with them and apply it. It's not just kind of um, raw knowledge and skills. It's someone who's run their own business. It's someone who's worked as a nurse. It's someone who's worked in customer service. And, and the, the hiring managers we talk to really value that experience as well as the training. Yeah, Keith, thank you. And I know we had a, a question from our audience uh, in reference to those uh, that are looking for a career change. And you know, when you apply to a job and it, it doesn't seem to get through the, uh, the applicant tracking system and also, you know, not feeling maybe there's as much of a, a market for those in career change. And, you know, I, I'd say, unfortunately, there's not an easy answer here, but fortunately, there are things that, that can be done. And this is really the, the networking component of things. Uh, reality is technology from a job applicant standpoint, it is sometimes a, a roadblock. It, uh, it may be looking for some keywords and um, I'm sure Lindsay and Zach and, and others can attest when you put, uh, put a role out there, um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of resumes come in. It, um, it really is a little bit of a, you know, it's hard, to, it's a needle in a haystack when you're, you're trying to get on the radar of a company. So I think this is when you go to sessions like this or seek people out or reach out to people on LinkedIn, that ability to be proactive. And um, it, it does take a lot of extra work, but it, it does pay off in the long run. I think uh, almost all of us on this panel have uh, built relationships through just that ability of reaching out. Um, Keith, you're, you and I go back about three years now and, it, and it's strictly due to the networking component uh, of it. So uh, that would be the, the one bit of advice I can give is uh, try not to be discouraged on the applying to a role, but really go out, out of your way to see who in your network might be able to make an introduction, what type of event you can go to to get in front of someone. And that ability to be proactive in those measures will pay off in the long run. If I can jump in there too, Harold, yeah. um, I think that one of the things when you're a career changer, um, one of the things that you can and, and should really highlight is the transferable skills that you have. What are those skills that you had in the career you were in that transfer really well into technology? Okay. Um, and, and it might not even be in your career, but there could be other things you do in your life um, around you know, solving problems. Um, Helping, there a lot of times people who aren't in the tech industry don't realize how how much there is how how much people interaction there is in technology. You're really interacting with people. You need to to be able to be a good listener, um, and you're also helping people solve their problems. Um, and so, if you can take, we've seen a lot of success in in the. Um, the training programs that we've offered, we've seen a lot of success with people who are um, coffee baristas, um, people who are, are bartenders, people who have had that interaction, who are really good at talking to, listening to customers, finding out what they need. Um, take those skills and you're adding in the technical components and um, as you're adding in the technical components, don't, don't forget about emphasizing those soft skills because they are critical. Um, not only to get that job, like you were saying, but to keep that job. Yeah. 
Yeah, spot on, Sue. Uh, I think it, it's a mix these days of, of uh, how you communicate. And, and that doesn't, I'm clearly an extrovert, but uh, there are, the key to communication is, is doesn't matter if you're an extrovert or an introvert. It's just your ability to really reach out to people, be a great listener, as Sue mentioned, and, and connect. Zach, we're going to throw it back over to you. Uh, we're already flying through our session this morning. And um, I think it's a good, a good segue to, you know, those that are considering new opportunities. I know we just had a question that we fielded. Um, maybe, what advice can you share about a, a, maybe a unique or different way to get on the radar of a company that you may be interested in? Sure. Well, the first thing I would highlight is utilize your network. You know, figure out who do you possibly know at that company. You know, utilize tools such as LinkedIn. Um, make sure your profile, you know, kind of list those skills that you have it lists all that experience um you know like we like everybody was just saying those soft skills in the you know previous employment you may have had even if you've re-skilled and gone out and got some certification you've gone to some place like wave tech and you know got some of those uh, new technology skills that you're looking to leverage you need to be able to tell your story um and be able to really, really highlight those intangible skills that aren't necessarily something you're getting out of a, out of a class. They're the things you had anyway. Um, you know, having the right attitude, the adaptability, um, you know, the ability to be accountable for the things that you're looking to deliver. It's really important that, that you're able to highlight those things. Uh, secondly is understand the company that you're targeting. Um, you know, try to attend any type of, uh, you know, webinars they may be having. You know, read up the, uh, you know, what they focus on on their website, you know, figure out if there are areas that you could kind of increase your knowledge across some of those areas. And don't be, able, don't be afraid to use tools such as LinkedIn, such as going to um, job fairs, career fairs, fairs. People are mistakenly under the impression sometimes that it's easy for companies to find talent. It, that is not the case. We spend a lot of time um, trying to find the right people. Um, you know, not just the right skills sometimes, you know, we need to make, find, find the right candidates that are going to make the overall teams better. And, you know, having the, um, you know, having the uh, confidence to reach out, um, you know, to somebody within that company, um, you know, having the confidence to not be scared to, you know, make a phone call sometimes, right? That shows that those hiring managers and that shows the people within those organization that, you know, this is somebody that's got some confidence. They're not, not afraid to take something head on. And those are the type of skills we're looking for in every role we hire for. Yeah. Zach, spot on. And, you know, there, there's, there's a couple uh, things here. Um, you know, there are roles yeah. that you just have to have a certain set of skills for. If I wanted to be a cloud security architect, uh, I just do not have the capability or the skill set to do that. Um, those are some specifics. Then there are, are roles that you need to have the right set of skills, but companies will have flexibility and often do for the right communication skills, the right drive, the right aptitude. A lot of uh, our clients hire on aptitude just as much as overall skills. And this is where you know the, the things that Zach and Lindsay and Sue and Keith mentioned really help out the Part one is, okay, that's great when I'm interviewing, but how do I even get an interview? Um, that's really the going and making an introduction, use, utilizing your network, as Zach mentioned. Uh, uh, Sue you know, talked about transferable skills that you maybe have had elsewhere. Put those things on your resume. Um, you've really um, got to put the things on a resume that will jump out to someone who picks up that resume, it was looked at 10 others today and said, wow, this is someone who clearly has taken the time to highlight their background. So I think that's part one. And part two is, is the interview part of this is same thing, right? Have great questions ready for the people that you're interviewing with. Show that you've done your homework. You've been on their website. You've attended webinars. You've read white papers, things of that nature. Um, we can't encourage that enough. That is often in a competitive job market. Those little things are, are what tips the balance between candidate A and, and candidate B. So um, I'll, I'll stop there because I know we've got a, a lot to get to and we want to shift a little bit. We're going to go to you, Lindsay. I didn't know if you wanted to add anything there. Yeah, Harold, the two things I would add really quick would be one, when it comes to actually getting through an applicant tracker, because that's still half the battle. If you don't know someone, 
make sure you're spending time for your resume to customize it to every single job that you are applying to and pulling out as many keywords as humanly possible and making sure they're in your resume because it boils down to the AI intelligence that companies are using. They're pulling from that and that's how they're ranking resumes. Um, and so making sure that you really are tailoring each resume to each job you're applying for. And then when it comes to your network, I think it's like we all, we all say so much, you know, utilize your network, reach out to people. Who do you know? I work with so many students that they don't have a network. They didn't come from, you know, maybe a family who, you know, mom or dad can connect you. And that is so okay. And that is, um, I don't expect everyone to have a network. Um, start cold calling people. It is totally okay. Asking people for advice. If you don't have, if you don't have a network, if you don't come from somewhere that has a network, that's okay. Start to build your own because I can tell you the industry I got into, there was no one that could help me get into what I wanted to get into. And that's, that's okay. And so you build your own network and you find your way. Um, and so I don't want people to feel like, you know, you have to know someone right away. That's okay. Use tools like LinkedIn, go to um, your, you know, career center at your, if you're at a community college, if you're at a university, just start talking to people and reaching out and then you will see how quickly your network will actually become your own network. Um, so that's the one thing I always like to tell students. I don't want them to feel like they have to all of a sudden, they have to know people automatically and that they're um, not, you know, not as ahead if they don't have that network right away. Lindsay, it's a great, great point. And um, uh, I, Keith, you, I know you, you uh, wanted to add on to that a bit. Yeah, I feel great. We're all raising our hand like, we're in class, you know, it's like, well, I want to speak next, I'm, I'm ready to, to go next. Um, just to, to flip for a couple of minutes to what the businesses can do too, to hide, to, to look for people and to make those connections, because we have a lot of people who are, who are struggling to find jobs. I know a lot of businesses that are really struggling to find people to fill their talents. And, and what can, some things that, that they can do, you know, at Wake Tech, we have information nights. We have opportunities to mentor students. Um, we have our programming capstone that we just now are bringing mentors in to help students with that process. Um, we have virtual recruitment fairs. We have work-based learning internships and we're working right now on apprenticeships. Um, and so those are a lot of creative ways that companies can get to know our students and plug in early on because um, you know, there's a phrase we use, we're all fishing from the same pond, right? We're all fishing from the same pond, trying to find the same talent. And if you go take a look at that reservoir over there, this Wake Tech, if you get in there early, you know, you get access to our students through these activities, and then they continue on either working with you and building in the company and have opportunities for getting a four-year degree while still working. And you kind of, you kind of reel them in early. So um, there are a lot of opportunities for, for career fairs, for information nights, mentoring, work-based learning, apprenticeships that companies can use to also help get the talent there. Oh, that, that, that's, that's great, Keith. And Lindsay, we're going to kick it back to you uh, because I know we wanted to shift our conversation just a bit to talk about, um, you know, we'd love to hear, and I know our audience would as well, what programs your organization has in place today to attract talent from historically underrepresented segments of the population. Yeah, absolutely. So that is a huge emphasis for our organization. It's something that I am um, really honored to get to carry out um, day in and day out. So from a university perspective, we are engaged with the North Carolina Governor's Program. And so that means we are hiring interns specifically from our North Carolina HBCU. So that's a really fun opportunity there. In addition to that, we have very targeted recruitment, um, not only for our management trainee program, but for a lot of our um, critical positions that are out in the field as well as at our corporate offices through um, veteran hiring, through um, we're working with community colleges and different technical and trade schools to hire for very specific skills um, that we are looking to fill. And the really cool thing about our organization and a lot of our opportunities is we're not, like you said, we're not necessarily looking for um, that four-year degree. What we are looking for is that soft skill 
background that is going to really give you that grit and work ethic because we can train you on so many specific things, but we can't teach that grit. We can't teach that, um, that kind of work ethic and drive. And so um, we have, that is the majority of what, where we spend our days is targeted recruitment within, again, the specifically I'd say trade and technical schools. Um, some high schools, although we um, have to hire um, individuals 18 and older, so that always gets a little tricky with high schools. Um, and also um, different associations within, we're in 14 different states as well as District of Columbia. So finding those pockets within each um, kind of territory and finding what are your trade schools, your technical skills, your community colleges, as well as your four-year institutions, um, a lot of HBCU hiring, and then as well as our veteran population. Um, so we are kind of looking across the gamut at where, how can we maximize the talent that we're bringing in? Because we're putting each of them through really um, strenuous leadership development programs because we're hiring for our future leaders and we want that to be a diverse um, population in all forms so that, so it's got to start really early. So that's what we're making sure that our hiring is equally diverse for that young talent so that it matches up in five, 10, 15 years. That's ultimately the, the long-term game plan of why we're doing what we're doing and that vision of where, where we're looking to bring people in from. Perfect. Th thanks, Lindsay. And for those that aren't familiar, what, what type of roles, uh, and, well, I guess first, I know you mentioned uh, Coca-Cola uh, distributed, right, is in um, 14 states in the District of Columbia. Uh, I believe you're headquartered in Charlotte. Is that Yep, we're headquartered in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, so the, the really kind of high level view of what we do, we are a supply chain organization. So we are the ones that make the product. Um, we So we bottle your Coca-Cola product headquartered in Atlanta, Coca-Cola. They have the syrup and they are responsible for most of the marketing. We're responsible for actually making the product, distributing it, and then ultimately getting it to your stores and selling it. So we're the ones actually putting product on the shelves and selling it. Um, Coke in Atlanta, um, doesn't actually sell products. So we're the ones actually selling the physical product to our um, our grocery stores and our gas stations and our universities, our restaurants. Um, so kind of all of the above, we have um, over 300 brands in our portfolios. So there's a lot of fun um, beverages to, to get to taste, um, but that leads way to a lot of different opportunities. So we have everything from um, in positions in sales, so frontline sales and actually um, selling into our stores. We also have people that are working with restaurants selling in from our center of support. So that's like a localized um, position here in the Charlotte area. Um, in terms of technical skills, we have a lot of supply chain um, focused positions. So that um, really runs the gamut of different positions. So when you um, he talked about um, like business analytics. We have a lot of analytics positions that we really need people who can pick apart um, data and what do we do with it and how do we make recommendations based on that down to very mechanical and very highly technical mechanical positions, which is really fun to get to recruit for because there's a lot of apprenticeship style um, training that we have that we offer. So that's training um, to work on literally our trucks, how we get our trucks, how we get our product to um, locations. Those trucks are like the linchpin of how we get um, get product out. And if they go down, that's a very bad, bad yeah. thing. So people that are working on those trucks, as well as our equipment services, it's a huge revenue driver for us. And so when you think of equipment services, that's not only, so if you go to, let's say, an outlet mall and you see a um, vending machine for Coca-Cola products, we're the ones that are actually servicing those machines. Those again are highly technical pieces of equipment that require a lot of training to actually be able to um, service those and keep them up and running and keep them in um, life cycle. And then also restoring products and then also building and restoring and, and maintaining. Um, if you go to a restaurant and you like McDonald's even, and you see you're, you have the, um, machine that you're just pouring your your fountain the fountain machine so it's all the technicalities behind that so that's where I love for people to get to see when you're looking at technology there's so many different opportunities within yeah. that kind of tech field and that's you don't just have to be a, a, a software developer there are, are you don't no there's so many other, cool opportunities yeah. and so many ways to use your school your skill set so I would encourage individuals if you don't know um, what kind of opportunities there are in an organization 
ask. I guarantee you there are so many people that would love to tell you about all of the um, great opportunities there are within an organization and what technology really looks like within their organization. And is there a way to kind of go, uh, is there an entry point for you and what would you need to do to kind of access those entry points? Wonderful. Lindsay, thank you for sharing about that and uh, the, just the, the breadth of different roles and opportunities they're there. We've got a, a, a couple of minutes before I'm going to turn it back over to Emily and, and Zach. I'm going to come back to you and we'll, you know, we'll do a, a rapid fire session here. But as far as you know, this is an NC Tech event and we want to end uh, as it relates to technology, how is your organization using technology today to attract talent? Well, we're using you know, our brand, our network, our website. Um, there's a lot of platforms out there as well. And, you know, for the people out there that are kind of looking for their next opportunity, I would utilize tools like LinkedIn, make sure that you're not only, you're not only populating that with your skills and your background and your experiences, but you're also making sure that you're connecting, um, with those people that you've worked with, you're expanding your network. One of the first steps I take when we're looking for a specific skill set is to look at my network on LinkedIn and see who knows people that have, have specific skills or work for specific companies that we might be looking for, um, you know, that specific talent base. Um, so that would be, you know, probably my number one uh, recommendation for folks out there that are looking for that next opportunity. Perfect. And if they are looking for that next opportunity, why would they want to be at rapid scale? What could you share? What, what excites you about going there each day? Well, we're a rapidly growing company that's, um, you know, part of the Cox communication family of companies. So we have a great corporate support um, from our parents. Um, you know, we have a great product that is continuing to expand by the day, um, a great customer base, and just a great, um, you know, a, a great team at rapid scale from, you know, from the, the, the newest employee on our support team all the way through to our C-level, uh, to our C-level leaders. So it's a great place to go every day and to, to see the things that we've been able to accomplish. Great. And you're, you're headquartered in Raleigh, but for certain roles, considering uh, candidates, regardless of where they may sit. True. Yes. And we also have another large office in Irvine, California. In Irvine. Perfect. All right. Uh, a closing thought from Sue. Uh, we got about 30 seconds for Sue, 30 seconds for Keith, and then we'll uh, jump back over to uh, Emily. Anything you'd like to just share with our audience, Sue? Yeah, I would just say, um, as, as I'm listening to everyone on the panel here talk, one of the things that um, I'm struck with is that there is just a wide variety of um, opportunities out there in the tech field. And there are a lot of people who want to get in the tech field. And, you know, whether they're going to get training, you know, self-paced training, they go through a community college, look at if you're uh, an employer, look at nonprofits like um the Wounded Warrior Program has a Warriors to Work um, component where they focus on helping warriors get um, skilled up and get into jobs. Um, there are, you know, training boot camps. Um, CompTIA or, um, offers training. Community colleges offer training. Expand your, you know, spread your net out a little bit wider in order to see, you know, where you can find this talent. And there's a lot of untapped markets there you can tap into. Wonderful. Thank you, Sue. Keith? I'm not known for being brief, but I'll, I'll try to be so right now. <laughs> I'll um, help I, you I, a little I, bit, all right? You know, right? You'll pull up a thing. I, I am one of the few for Bush Techs, if not the only one on LinkedIn. So um, feel free to look for me and add to be there. And Wake Tech is, is Wake Tech when you search for us um, and, and look for our IT program. So making these connections, um, earning certifications that matter for hiring and promotion decisions like the CompTIA certifications and partnering with companies that are right there, um, like Lindsay and Zach are representing, um, really create a pipeline for employment and for their training. And it, it's great to have an ecosystem that we can all work together. Great. Thanks, Keith. And uh, I'll steal your thunder uh, with the exception of my brother, sister-in-law and wife. Uh, uh, we're the only Zeichners on LinkedIn. So please feel free to connect with me as well. Very easy to uh, find. Um, I want to just thank Sue, Lindsay, Zach, Keith, and I want to thank our audience as well for uh, the discussion today. This was a lot of fun. I learned uh, a, a number of new things and I hope everyone did as well. So thank you folks. And uh, Emily, uh, I, I missed the cutoff by about a minute, but go. That's okay. 
No, thank you, Harold, and all of our panelists. It's always so great. I wish I could let y'all go all day. I know I would listen to you all all day. Um, but we will wrap up here. I just wanted to note, uh, obviously, hiring for tech talent is uh, important for so many of our attendees. And um, in our network, we're doing a virtual tech job expo on April 21st. Um, we've done three virtual tech job expos already since um, the end of 2019, and uh, we'd love to chat with you more if you'd like to participate in that. I'll send, excuse me, the recording and some information about that to everyone today. Uh, I just want to say a very quick thank you, um, of course, to our sponsors of our uh, talent network. Obviously, Harold here with APC is our presenting sponsor and Right Direction Technology Solutions. So with that, I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your day and week. And thank you so much for joining everyone. Take care. Thanks everyone.